So you are now again back at the field study one. My name is JD and I will be your lecturer for this episode. Okay, so this is episode four. The episode four is still on learner's diversity, focusing on the diversity on community and home. As what I have mentioned before, that um, prior to taking the field study course, you should have taken the professional education courses. And I'm just giving you an overview of the info, important or pertinent topics that you should have taken prior to taking this course. So that's why it, this is a speed or crash lecture. Okay, so different learners, as I have mentioned in the previous episode, in episode three, have different um, environment, different experiences. And it really takes a village to raise a child. It's not just about the genetics, the biology, but also about the environment. So take a look at the image of Yuri Bronfenbrenner's ecological model of learning environment. So Yuri Bronfenbrenner is one of the educational psychologists who deals with this. So uh, a child, once it is born, it is engaged in a lot of environment. So we have the five stages here. First is the microsystem. So microsystem is the smallest unit. Basically, this is the family. And then next is the mesosystem. This is where the child could already identify which one is family, which one is school, which one is a healthcare. And then salabas ng mesosystem, microsystem, mesosystem is the exosystem. Exosystem is already the community engaging the child to the city, to the, to the different cities also, no? And engaging them on, on uh, neighbors, on identifying family and friends, and that. Um, and the fourth one is the macro system. Macro system is the larger picture already and highlighting uh, culture, highlighting race, uh, social stratification, social economic backgrounds, identifying international lo laws. Okay, uh, not that you're going to study international laws, but um, being able to determine which is uh, being able to determine a law that is universal. So this is when the child is thinking like a global citizen. So in the 21st century learning, we are not preparing our child again to be workers or to be employees alone. We are training our children to, or learners to become, um, to create their own jobs in the future. If you notice in the curriculum, there are jobs that do not exist before. But at 21st century, may nga nag exist na, na jobs. Like digital artist. That job does not exist 50 years ago, 60 years ago, but it exists now. So that's the four ecological models. And the fifth one is the chronosystem. The chronosystem is the entire lifespan of the child. Entire system wherein the child is engaged with its family, with its friends, with the community, and then to the world. So allowing the learners to be engaged in a community of such, this allows the learners to grow further. And we want learners that have sufficient experiences. Sometimes sinasabi nila that learning is actually dependent on, uh, on age, no? but actually hindi lang ganon. It's also dependent on experiences of a certain learner. And then the other one that I want to highlight, so that's the community that I want to highlight. Uh, I want to reiterate again that it takes a village to raise a child. So do not say that, ay, kasi ano lang yan, kasi sa pamilya lang nila, ganyan pamilya lang nila. But maybe there is an impact of this community and the society. Remember that um, in philosophical books, that child is actually raised based on the social construct of the society. 
So if a child is raised in a different society, it might grow differently, or he or she might grow differently, not it. Okay. He or she might grow differently. The child might grow differently if the child is engaged in a different environment, although that child still has the same parents. Okay. So the environment plays a vital role. The family indeed plays a vital role as the smallest unit of the society, but uh, the school plays a major role as well. The church, the hospitals, the neighbors, and media plays a vital role. And then for this one, uh, this is Bumrin's parenting styles. Um, again, uh, child's development is influenced by community and home. So, parenting style plays a lot of, a lot of, uh, what they call this, plays a lot of responsibility when it comes to child. Because, of course, um, uh, you are the parents. But, uh, according to E.G. White, that being a parent is the noblest profession. It's like being a teacher as well. But being a parent is noble if done properly, according to Edna Mode <laughs> in, uh, in uh, The Incredibles. But if done properly, parenting is a noble job. So I want to uh, tell you something about parenting. Parenting is a difficult task, which I admire on a lot of our uh, parents. No? Um, but then again, um, parenting requires learning or uh, requires sufficient knowledge about how you're going to raise a child. So there are four types of parenting. The first one is the authoritarian. So for the authoritarian, uh, the parents are very firm with their children and expect unwavering and unquestioning obedience. Rules are set by parents and misbehave. And if the child misbehaves, uh, the child will probably have a withdrawal of affection, physical punishment, or threats. So this is where you have little warmth. Oh, ito, you have little warmth, low warmth, pero high demand. So autocratic siya, structured environment. Punishment, sometimes this is corporal punishment. Emotionally distant, power over. So parang laging sinasabi dito na mag- because I said so, kasi sinabi ko, kaya sumunod ka. Kasi sinabi ko, sumunod ka. And sometimes these parents do not talk to their children. Parang they just want their children to follow. But then again, uh, baka ang gusto lang din ng parent na ganito is to have their children follow uh, a certain structure or footsteps that they created. But Authoritarian parents, uh, ang nangyayari sa mga anak nila, again, this is a general approach, is first, they are unhappy. The children become unhappy, fearful, withdrawn, inhibited, hostile, and aggressive. And they have low self-esteem and difficulty with fears. And then the, that's the authoritarian. So if you want to be an authoritarian parent, that's the most likely the child that you're going to have. Next is permissive. So permissive parents seen at the uh, second quadrant. <laughs> okay, um, it, Our parents that are not firm or they are also not controlling, they only have few expectations, maybe warm and caring, but the parent to be uninvolved and uninterested. So they are saying, ikaw bahala, you're the boss, ganyan, and uh, Konti lang yung rules nila. Uh, they are very light with their children. Non-directive, kasi kapag authoritarian, usually they want their children to become a certain profession and they want them to follow. Enter this school, do this, ganito. Pagdating sa permissive, ikaw, basta, mag, uh, basta mag-college ka. Kahit saan, basta mag-college ka. Something like that. Leniency is there. As you can see, the control is low, but also the responsiveness is high. So, and then din naman sa their guiding. So usually, permissive parents, they have children that believe their parents do not care of for them, some of them. And they also often are impulsive, aggressive, and lack of self-control. 
and they have low levels of in, uh, independence and responsibility. This is sometimes kasi product ito ng parang, example, they, want, they just give you cookies to calm down or they just hand their children tablet to calm down. So, ganyan yung mga permissive na parents. But they want their children to calm down. <laughs> The next one is uninvolved. So uninvolved in other textbooks, they call it rejecting, neglecting. So rejecting, neglecting parents are uh, disengaged from their children and neither demanding nor responsive to their children and provide no structure, supervision, support, and guidance. This is the, the third quadrant, uninvolved. So um, how should I say this? They're absent, they're there, but they're not actually there. And children do not actually feel the warmth of their parents. And rejecting parents have children that are found to be least competent in their overall function and adjustments. This is because they are not supported properly. And then lastly is the authoritative parenting. So the authoritative parenting has high response and high demands, which is found in the quadrant one, the first quadrant. So, ito mga authoritative parents na to, they, uh, parents achieve a good blend. So, meron silang firm yet loving, have clear and reasonable expectations and limiting of their children, treat children uh, with respect and warmth, make children understand consequences on their behavior. So, if if uh, they, they guide their children. So if the children misbehaves, they punish them, but explains to the children in their way kung bakit nga ba pinaparosahan tong children, tong anak nila. They're also warmth kasi mataas ang, uh, mataas ang responsiveness nila to their child. They guide their children. What do you want to be? What school do you want to enter? Why do you want to enter that school in terms of academics or even in, in actual life applications. So that's um, the authoritative parenting. Now, oftentimes, their children have uh, their children have social competency. They also have self-reliance and they have great ability to show self-control and have higher self-esteem and better, uh, better adjusted. So um, if you want to have those kinds of children, then become an authoritative parent. Because basically, teachers, we are second parents and we must be aware of this. But then again, what happens inside their homes uh, plays, a lot of, uh, plays a lot on the picture on, become, on, on teaching them on their behavior as well. So, yeah. Um, parenting is a noble job if done properly. So that's the end of the episode four. So we discussed about the school and the environment and from episode two to episode four, we talked about learners' diversity and in different subtopics. For episode four, we talked about the community and the home. So home is the first school of a child. So as parents, they must learn how to raise their children. And as, as what I've mentioned, the first six years of a child is very crucial. And it takes a village to raise a child. So that would be all for the fourth episode of the Field Study 1. Thank you, and God be with you.